So, with it being on the third season, um, how did you guys decide to go in such a different direction and go to Asia, um, which is kind of a controversial topic politically wise? So, that's kind of one of the decisions. Okay. Um, Truthfully, the decision to go to Asia was predicated more on where would it be fun to take the ship? Uh, where haven't we been? We started at the North Pole almost. We went down across Europe, South, Central America, Coastal America, Mississippi River. It's a big world, and we wanted to choose some place that might have an interesting location and interesting characters and possible different villains. And so it really stemmed from the fun part of storytelling, which is, you know, where do you want to go? The political stuff was back burner for us. You know, uh, as I said in the panel, a lot of times politics and real life catches up to what you're doing, even if you didn't intend it. But for us, it was more about just where would it be fun to go? And as I look to season four, it's the same thing, I think. Where would it be fun? You know? And then after that, you go into the what if this, what if that, and you start telling your story. I understand we're about to see your directorial debut. What was that experience like, and, and would you do it again? Uh, yeah, I directed this coming up episode, episode seven. Uh, it was the greatest experience for me. It was a lot of fun. First of all, I had great help because I had my personal cast and crew and people I've worked with since 2012, and so it's a great level of trust I had for them to get me through the process. And uh, it was great for me to experience firsthand, not just visiting the set or hearing about it, what the crew goes through on a daily basis to make this show happen. So that when I ask them to do things in the future, I know what I'm asking them to do. It's sort of like going into battle with your troops without any of the risk factors that go along with that. So it's a weak metaphor to considering, but it's the same idea. If you walk a mile in their shoes, you kind of know what you're asking them to do. And also creatively, it was just very fulfilling because I spent a lot of time in the writer's room playing the parts and picking up the ideas and then we, we put them in the scripts and then we talked about what we want and then someone else executes it and this is a chance for me to do kind of be part of the job to a certain degree and still rely on the great artists we have working with us so I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it again if I can it's all a question of how much time I have if my writer's room is cranking out stories I'll, I'll have more time if we get bogged down I'll have less time but I hope you like it Regarding the women uh, watching the show every week, it's, it's basically like watching a one-hour movie. It's, it's that huge. Um, do you feel like it's hard to keep up uh, production-wise with you know that high level of quality week to week as opposed to you know on a feature film basis? Yeah, this is a very challenging show to me. We, we put everything into each episode. Each episode uh, begins with an idea, and we go, can we pull that off? And then, it has, then we have a script, and then we hand it to production, and they say, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, okay, but they, they never say, we can't do it. They just say, let's try to do it. And then that's where communication comes in, because we're very flexible in the writing staff. If there's a real problem, you can find a creative solution. So rather than coming back and saying, we couldn't find you a pirate haven like, that looks like this, we found you something like this, instead of giving up, they give you alternatives. And then I go, I can work with that, and then I rewrite the script. You guys know when you rewrite scripts, they, they change the color of the pages, and so, so that um, you know what a new page is coming out. So we go from white to blue to yellow, pink, salmon, every show does a different golden rod. And then if you go back to white again, after you go through all that, you go to double white. And that means you've done a lot of revisions. We're always in the doubles, because we're always revising, not because the story's not working, but because it's a hard show to make. And we feel this pressure to keep that level of action, summer movie, big budget, you know, aesthetic every week. And so far, it's sort of like, it's sort of like running down a hill as you're falling down the hill, and it gets to the bottom, if you're still standing, then it, you meant it on purpose. That's, that's how it feels. But it's a great experience. It's a, it's a 13 month, for 13 episodes job. You know, it isn't like you can crank them out fast. There's a lot of visual effects, a lot of, you know, a lot of work that goes into it. We have an amazingly dedicated crew. Uh, thanks for doing the show. Sure. It's great. Um, I, I can assume that it, it kind of took a while to get the show on TV. I'm sure it did. Um, and things have, things have changed. Uh, has the current, let's just say, the election, <laughs> has it changed the way that the writing uh, room works? You know, because things could get worse in the real world. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, if you were to kind of... How, how much of the sensibilities of the current situation are manifested into what you're doing in the writing? 
I think we, we start off with what was with our story, and we live in our little bubble. What what makes sense for this world we've created, and if we follow those rules, the audience feels there's a sort of holistic quality to it. It makes sense. And if someone acts a certain way that's different from what the show is, everyone feels it. That applies, by by the way, to even a cop show or a law show. They have their world and they have their rules of behaving. If someone does something that's out of character, you feel it. So we deal with our stories. We obviously all live in the world, and so when Ebola hit and we saw the way people were reacting, we were remarking, oh, that's kind of how our characters were reacting, or well, that's an interesting insight, maybe we can bring that in. So it creeps into our storytelling, but mostly we bring to it our own life experience as it is to say, you know, what if this happened, what if that happened? I was really afraid of viruses. For some reason, something you can't see that make you sick. Cooties. Yeah. And so I called up some virologists and, you know, and uh, we said, hey, we have this idea, like this virus is kind of buried in the permafrost, but the earth warms, it gets released, picked up by migrating birds, and zoonotically jumps to a human being. What do you think? And they go, yeah, that's kind of our worst nightmare. And so I knew we had an idea for a show there. So it's, it really comes from within as opposed to from without. You know, the world's going to be the world, and if you try to react to it or try to guess it, you're just going to end up chasing it, you know, which is not what we're interested in doing. Excellent. Most writers, when starting a show these days, say, yes, we know exactly how it ends. We already have this all mapped out. Do you know where it's all ends? No. No, we, we don't because we don't want to write towards it. We want to keep going. If they, if they called me tomorrow and said, this is it, you've got X number of episodes and you're done, whether it's one season or two seasons, then I can start mapping. But even then, you want to keep it organic and free because you never know what you discover as you're writing. So we write ourselves into a corner every week and figure out how to get out of it. And that's the fun. Thanks for the honesty. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, perfect.